Hi there friends and welcome at another Microsoft Meets community event. It's our fourth edition already and it's our one year anniversary so we have something to celebrate. So don't worry we will continue with this as much as you want because community is important and community is great. So as you recognize this opening session is in the desktops in the cloud video format. The format that we normally run on YouTube with guest speakers from Microsoft Engineering and as well the worldwide for your desktop communities. However, so today we're doing things just a little bit different from normal because we wanted to share with you our top 10 tips and tricks around WVD and there are a lot of new things to cover since our last masterclass event. So let's get started. So let's start with tip number one. And tip number one is around publishing the Windows Virtual Desktop Client, the MSRDC Remote Desktop Client to your physical endpoints. So how can you do that? So if your physical endpoints are enrolled with Microsoft Intune, if they are MDM enrolled, you can easily go in the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center to Applications and then click on Add. And in there, you can easily add an application like a Win32 MSI file. You give it a name of that application, a publisher name as well. After that, you give them the parameters to like silently install the application with the parameters to make it per user or per machine. And if you are done with that, you create a filter. So the Azure Active Directory group where the application needs to be pushed to, where the users are part of, and then as part of your physical endpoint, and this could be a virtual endpoint too. So you can see the application pushed in your physical desktop endpoint environment. You can see the Microsoft Intune management extension silently installing the client and you see the client popping up here too. So tip number two is around identity security, which you can find in Azure Active Directory under the security blade. And then in there, we want to specify first named locations. These are IP address ranges that you trust and do not trust so we can establish our rules. So let's go to conditional access and create a new policy. First, you need the users that this will be uh, for. This can be all users or just specified users or groups. Then we need our cloud application, which in our case is Windows Virtual Desktop. Then we need our conditions, and there are many things to choose from, so I'll just show you one, and that is the locations that we specified earlier. Once you have that set up, then we want to go to our grant section and where you can choose to block or grant access and add conditions like multi-factor authentication. Then we need our session limit. And this is anywhere from one hour up to one year. So whatever works in your environment and that's how you secure your identities. So let's share tip number three with you. And tip number three is around screen capture protection. And that's a new feature to avoid making screenshots of your virtual session. So you can avoid making screenshots of sensitive data. It runs inside your virtual desktop environment. And it runs as well as part of Microsoft Teams. So if you do screen sharing in Microsoft Teams, you can avoid that too. So it's a relatively easy one to enable. So you just need to add this registry key to your virtual environment, to your session host, to your images, and then you're good to go. So let's share tip number four with you. And tip number four is around securing your Windows Virtual Desktop environment with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, which is now GA for single and multi-session Windows 10. So it's very easy to create. You just need to assign an E5 license and start the creation of your Microsoft Defender for Endpoint account. And once you're done with that, you can as well enhance the integration with Microsoft Intune. So you can see your threats and detections in Intune as well being reported from Microsoft Defender into Microsoft Intune. And you see the connection state then in enabled if you're done with that. And you can start enrolling the agents directly from Microsoft Intune to your endpoints, your virtual endpoints and your physical endpoints via one single pane of glass console, admin console. You can do it as well via scripts, uh, as you can see here. So if you have another environment on-prem, you can use Microsoft Defender for Endpoint for that too. And once you're ready, you can see the risk level, exposure level, and as well some other threats being detected and optimizations to secure your uh, Windows Virtual Desktop environment easily. So let's share tip number five around multimedia redirection with you, which you can use very soon as part of Windows Virtual Desktop to optimize your video traffic as part of Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge as an extension. So it will not only improve the video experience because it renders the video directly to your endpoint, it also releases your session host from a CPU cycles, as you can see here, it only consumes 5%. So without the multimedia redirection enabled, you see a consumption of 33%. So it's a significant like increase of 25%. Our next tip is for RDP short path. This helps you get to your virtual machines faster. So you basically connect just like the normal WVD process, but when you actually initiate the session, 
instead of the session host making an outbound connection to you, the gateway tells your client to connect directly over your private network, not over the internet, to the session host VM. And this is all covered in the docs where they'll help you to build a group policy through PowerShell. And once you've got all that set up, don't forget to add your network security, either your firewall or NSG rule for a inbound port 3390 on UDP. After that's all done in the client, you can see that it's working by going to your connection. You see our UDP is enabled. And when you zoom in on the connection details, I have a 14 millisecond latency over my client VPN, which is awesome because normal WVD connection would be at 33 milliseconds. So I've cut my time in half. Let's share tip number seven around optimizing your legacy print server environment to the new M365 service Universal Print. So with Universal Print, you can connect your printers up to the cloud because you leverage a platform as a server solution. So you simplify as well how you do print management in your environment. So on the side of the virtual desktop, you will see a cloud printer popping up if you search for printers. So you see all the printers that are assigned to you. So this is a manual approach. You can as well do it on an enterprise grade kind of level with the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please scan this QR code. You can as well connect printers if they are universal print ready directly to the universal print service, as you can see here in a Lexmark uh, printer menu. And if you're interested in more about this, learning more about Universal Print, uh, episode number 13 with the PMs of Universal Print has been released uh, like a couple of weeks back. So definitely worth catching up after this, uh, this event. Our next tip is gonna improve your MSIX packages with SIMFS. Now this is only available if your Windows version on your session host is Windows 10, 20H2 or newer, but SIMFS advantage over virtual hard drives is less impact on the system. They mount faster, they're less CPU intensive, and they're gonna be just more efficient. When you create a SIMFS package, that's what the payload looks like. You need all the files on your file share, and then you mount the uh, path here to the .sim file. It'll load your MSIX package through the portal, and then it's normal WVD app management. So let's share tip number nine around optimizing your Windows Virtual Desktop images with you with the Windows Virtual Desktop optimization tool. So you can find this blog that explains all the steps that you need to take for that at aka.ms slash optimize WVD. So if you are done with it and you have that script uh, loaded on your virtual machine, your session host images, you can easily run that and that will disable built-in features that you normally don't need as part of your virtual workload. So it's a very easy way to optimize your images. And on the left side, you see an image without the optimizations. And on the right side, you see an image with the optimizations that have been performed. So you see a significant drop in CPU and memory over here. So it's definitely worth uh, considering. So if you're interested in more, you can find the desktops in the cloud episode number six as well with the creators of the tool. So definitely worth checking out after this session. And our last tip is in disaster recovery. The things that we need to protect in DR are going to be our session host virtual machines, our user profiles in FS logics, and our images. When we plan for our DR, we also have all of our basic infrastructure that needs to be in place in both regions. We take our uh, personal host pools, use something like Azure Site Recovery and protect those VMs to another region, but your pooled systems should be treated differently. We could build either virtual machines in the DR region and attach them to the primary region's host pool or build a separate host pool in that other region. So thank you for joining us today. Please make sure that you're subscribed to Desktops in the Cloud on your favorite social media so you don't miss all the latest on WVD and enjoy the rest of the Microsoft Community event. And have fun today because we have some great speakers lined up. Thanks everyone.